So you can see the, the pedal uh, model that uh, is open in Inventive. Uh, this pedal model has been built around uh, two views. One view um, which is the X and Z view here on the top and one view which is the uh, X and uh, Y view here in the bottom. Uh, before I start the demo, you can see on the left we have the tree of uh, components uh, used in this pedal system. So the first component is the firewall component, uh, then we have the bracket component, uh, then the pedal component, for example. So in Inventive, uh, this type of model is uh, built by uh, simply loading in the assembly the different components. For example, here I'm loading the component called uh, bracket. So, okay, I say uh, load model instance and uh, bracket. Okay, so this is loading the, the bracket component. Uh, I'm going to hide the information that I have here in the in the bottom. So I place this uh, these lines information in the hidden layer. I'm going to lock the axis of the bracket using a fixed point and a fixed angle. Um, then I'm going to load in this assembly uh, the pedal component. So uh, pedal 01. Okay, I'm going to hide as well this uh, line information. Uh, maybe change also the color of the pedal. So now this pedal system has to be mounted on the bracket. So I'm going to say that we have uh, this pin here that should float in this hole. So before I do that, um, I think you can see right now in the model we have uh, three degrees of freedom. Total number of degrees of freedom is three because the pedal can move in X and Y and also it can uh, rotate. So I'm going to lock those degrees of freedom by creating a float. I'm going to say we have a float between this axis and this one. Um, when that is done, I'm going to also create an angle between the bracket and the pedal. So this creates uh, an angle measurement. Okay, and uh, now we have zero degrees of freedom. Um, and if I change the value of the angle, we can see the pedal that is rotating around the, around the bracket. So this is, very briefly, the way inventive models are created. We load the different components in an assembly and we constrain the components uh, relatively to each other using assembly constraints. Contacts, coincidences, um, floating pin in all constraints. So I'm deleting the angle. I'm going to uh, delete as well, sorry, uh, select the pedal and delete it and also select the, the bracket and uh, delete it from, from the view. And now I'm going to get back to the main assembly view that I uh, presented before. So in this geometric analysis and uh, optimization part of the demo, um, what we want to do is to look at uh, the coordinates of uh, what we call the pedal point. The pedal point is the point that is at the tip of the pedal here. So as you can see, we have created three coordinates, one coordinate x, one y here, and y, one that is called z. So those are the three coordinates of the pedal point uh, relative to the main plane of the firewall and to the axis of the firewall. So first I'm going to focus on the x coordinate. So on the x coordinate, uh, it's possible if we want to define the customer limits. We can enter um, a customer limit, for example, if the customer wants the x coordinate to be minimum uh, 228 and maximum uh, 242. So, when I enter those limits, uh, when I have entered those limits, it's now possible to run a tolerance analysis on this x measurement and uh, I get in Excel the tolerance analysis of uh, the X measurement. So in this tolerance analysis result, we get the limits that we have just defined. Lower limit, 228 and upper 242. Those limits are also uh, represented in the graph, the lower vertical red line here and the upper vertical red line. 
then inventive based on all the tolerances in the model has calculated the worst case variations and the statistical variations that we have here. So based on the statistical variations it has found that uh, we are going to have based on the current design 137.2 ppm it means we are going to have 137.2 uh, mechanisms out of 1 million um, that are going to not respect the limits that were defined on the X measurement. So the question is uh, how could we improve this ppm number? Uh, there is one obvious way to do it. Um, it would be to uh, go on the tolerance values and reduce the tolerance values. This is typically what would be done if we were in a late design phase. Uh, here we are in a preliminary design phase, so it means we have still the possibility to change the way the components are defined, the way the components will be manufactured. And uh, if we look, for example, at uh, the first contributor in this analysis, uh, you can see that uh, this contributor is um, having uh, more than 50% of impact on the variations. It's uh, an angle uh, that belongs to the component firewall. So maybe we could find a way to uh, remove this contributor from the list so that the variations are reduced. So what we can do is to go on the firewall component and try to investigate where this dimension is in the component and how to, uh, to remove its impact. So here I have entered the in-place edit for the firewall component and uh, I am looking uh, here um, I am still in the assembly view but what I'm looking, the dimensions I'm looking are the uh, the component dimensions uh, that belong to the firewall component so we find the angle again of 12.99 that is with a lock sign which means it's really a, a driving dimension it's a manufactured dimension and we see here on the right that we have another dimension of 53 between the two planes, between this plane of the firewall and the, 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 the hole here, which is 53, and it's a deduced dimension. So it's not, it's not a manufactured dimension. So one question we could ask is, uh, what would happen if we unlock this 12.9 dimension, and if we go on the 53 dimension and lock this 53 dimension? That's what I, I just did here. So after I have made this uh, unlock and lock operation, I exit the uh, in-place edit. I go in the tree and I, I, save, uh, I save the firewall component. Um, and now we are going to do again the tolerance analysis on the X measurement to see the impact of this uh, change analyze tolerance. So you see now that uh, obviously we still have the same limits as before, 22, 228, 242. But we don't find anymore the angle as a contributor. And uh, we see that our PPM level has been reduced from 147 to almost, almost 0 PPM. And this was done really without uh, without reducing any tolerance in the model. So we have inc increased the quality of the design without reducing any tolerance in our design. So with, without increasing the cost of the design. Just by making some better preliminary design thinking for the, the way the different components are, are defined. So the next thing we can do in this model is uh, also to look at the Y measurement. So I will do a tolerance analysis on this uh, Y measurement. Um, one thing we can see in this Y measurement uh, tolerance analysis is that uh, the first contributor in the tolerance analysis for Y is uh, a perpendicularity contributor between uh, this plane and the plane uh, C. If I zoom a little bit, I think we will see it more clearly. So it's the perpendicularity between uh, the, 
the contact plane of the pedal and the reference C of uh, this design. So, uh, okay. so this uh, tolerance analysis, I think, allows to show that uh, uh, inventive tolerance analysis include gd &T, uh, contributors, such as perpendicularity, position, uh, parallelism, um, tolerances. So it's possible also to perturb this uh, contributor. For example, if I perturb it of uh, plus and minus three millimeters, we see all the green part deforms. Uh, so it simulates a defect of uh, in the in the forming of the metal that uh, changes the orientation of the face of the green part according to the C reference. Okay, so this is. Of course, we would have to do the same type of uh, thinking on the, the tolerance analysis on the Y parameter uh, than what we just did on the tolerance analysis for the X parameter. And about the geometric tolerance analysis um, on this system, one last thing is that it's also possible uh, for the user to select uh, in one time uh, the X measurement, the Y measurement, and the Z measurement and to do a tolerance analysis on those three measurements at the same time. So if I select uh, all of them, I can say uh, analyze tolerance. And uh, when we do that, the system is going to generate um, a tolerance analysis that gives um, the variations for X, Z, and Y in one table. So it allows to know what are the parameters of the design that are the, the most important for those three um, critical uh, parameters.